Hello everybody, welcome to this video. My name is Dr. Lucas de Plessis. I'm a senior lecturer in the Department of Mechanical and Aeronautical Engineering at the University of Pretoria. And uh, this information video is regarding uh, practicum 6 of the module MOW217. Uh, MOW217 being manufacturing and design and specifically this video is uh, related to the class of 2023. There's a PDF containing all the arrangements for the practicum. I'm not going to go through it. Um, you're welcome to read it. The important thing is it's test conditions. You will need a 3.5mm jack earphone, which you will obviously have if you're listening to this video and watching this video. And then the information will be on the K-Drive. There's a PDF of a dimensionless detailed mechanical drawing of the drive shaft, which is the component that we are going to um, dimension in this practicum. Okay, then the step files are there, the drive shaft, the drive shaft sub-assembly. Um, there's obviously this video explaining how everything fits together and how the drive shaft is manufactured. And then all the design literature for, uh, that's on ClickUp will also be accessible for you. So even though um, it's test conditions, you can't talk, you can't bring any information with you, you will have access to the design literature on ClickUp. Okay, so on the OCR forms that you have in front of you, please fill in your student number and the assessment ID on each OCR form. Um, there are four OCR Form 30s um, with the views presented on the dimensionless PDF drawing of the drive shaft and then you are expected to dimension those views as if you have the PDF of the drive shaft in front of you, the dimensionless PDF drawing. So I said that before and I will just repeat it here, don't dimension the same feature twice on different views. OCR forms. Okay, you've got a, you must think of it as having a single dimensionless drawing in front of you and you are dimensioning these views. So for the step file, uh, you need to import that into FreeCAD, open the manipulator workbench to take certain measurements, um, and then you will add the tolerances and GDNT as you see fit. Okay, so the drive shaft sub-assembly is shown on the screen at the moment um, it is now a little bit or there are more components attached to this drive shaft um, sub-assembly compared to the sub-assembly that you saw last week okay uh, what is the same as last week is this pinion this component over here the pinion the gear the small gear it's called a pinion the lock ring, which is the component which you dimensioned last week, um, the shoulder bolt and the set screw or grub screw on the other end. Okay, you've got all of that. So what is added here, um, let me maybe uh, just hide a few components quickly. So, um, okay, let's hide the pinion, the lock ring, the shoulder bolt, the grub screw. Okay, now what we have on this end is one of the bearings um, and then obviously there's a bearing on this side. We'll talk about the motor in a little bit. So let's just zoom in onto this bearing interface over here. So what we have is a nylock lock nut, an M5 lock nut and then we've got um, this um, end cap that slides over this uh, diameter and it's an eight millimeter diameter but you can obviously measure it okay so it slides over that interface um, and once it's in position the lock nut then presses and ensures that the inner ring is inner ring of the bearing is pressed against this face of the shaft. Okay, I'll show that um, 
again let me just hide this component quickly okay so if we let's hide the small bearing okay so there you can see the this is now the um the drive shaft there's the shoulder against which the inner race of the bearing gets pressed this is an eight millimeter interface um, and that interface is an important interface between the sh the drive shaft and this end cap okay so that's an important interface the other important thing about um, is this fillet radius over here and that is um, prescribed by the manufacturer Okay, so if we look at the information sheet on the specific bearing that we will be using on that 8mm shaft, this is the code, it's a 628-8-2Z. Um, how do we know it's the right bearing? Um, if you look at the dimensions, then small d is 8mm. And that's exactly the bearing that fits onto this diameter over here. Okay, so the important thing, this fillet, um, as I said, it is prescribed. So here, if you go down, abutment dimensions, RA is specified as 0.2 max. That's the maximum that that radi radius can be. So that's important on your detailed mechanical drawing. All right. So, um, other than that, uh, let me just also point out, so this, this um, diameter is an important surface, very important. That fillet radius cannot be bigger than 0.2 millimeter, and this face is also important, okay? The reason is that... Um, the bearing, as I explained earlier, will be pressed. The inner race of the bearing will be pressed against the surface. So it is an important surface. Okay. Um, now, okay, so let's move on to the next surface of the shaft. And that's this diameter. Um, I think it's a diameter 10. And as you know from last week's practicum, this diameter is also important because this is where the spigot or the small gear actually fits. So let me just show you the pinion, not the spigot, the pinion. Okay, so that's where that uh, pinion gear fits. So you need to measure the diameters. Don't take my words. Don't accept 10 millimeters. You need to physically measure using the the um, manipulator workbench all right okay but note there's clearance here so that face would not be very important there's clearance nothing is pressing against that face the hole uh, through which the um, shoulder bolt fits okay let me just do that okay that hole is important okay so you need to measure that hole and measure the size in using a manip manipulator workbench and select an appropriate tolerance plus GD&T of that hole is, uh, is important. Okay, right, so then the next surface of the shaft is this and it's a diameter 12. Uh, where the second bearing fits and okay and this is now the location of the second bearing and you can see there are no shoulders against which that bearing is pressed okay but the diameter is very important so if we look at our dimensionless drawing of the drive shaft and we go to the notes you can see that the material is specified as an igus drylin r stainless steel shaft with a code a number and this number relates to the material it's diameter 12 h6 okay so that that is the raw material that this part is made of okay so here you can see the 
manufacturer's website Igus. Um, it's a, as I said six millimeter. You can see, even see the price per meter. Um, and if we scroll down here, um, there's the diameter tolerance H6. Um, what's also noteworthy is um, well, there you can see even the surface roughness, very smooth. 0 0.15 to 0 0.3 micron the hardness is 52 rock ball between 52 and 60 rock ball and even the roundness is less than half the diameter tolerance all right so um yeah the point here is please take note that um for the outer diameter of this drive shaft you are not going to remove any material that shaft is already on its correct size it's there's no need for any manipulation or change on the outer diameter of this shaft okay okay so then looking at the at this end of the uh, of the drive shaft this is now where the motor shaft is clamped okay um and what i also have is this are these two flats and the idea of the flats or the reason for the flats is that you can actually hold onto the shaft with a spanner um while you tighten this uh nylock nut and while you insert that grub screw firstly so you can secure the shaft or prevent the shaft from rotating with a spanner on this side um, and you can also um, secure the shaft while you tighten and loosen this collet nut okay so um, how this works let's just quickly talk about it uh, before i do i just want to jump back to the to the um to the drawing so you don't need to worry about the the dimensioning of this detail view one okay so the thread there's thread on this end of the drive shaft so there is the thread information and it's uh, an american thread um, the reason for that is we're using a uh, dremel collet and collet nut okay so the dremel collet fits into the hole um there's a taper here that uh, against which that collet presses i can quickly show you that if i remove the collet nut okay so this portion of the shaft is threaded there's the collet and there you can see that the collet has a taper and it when you secure when you tighten the collet nut it forces the collet into the hole okay there's a taper on both sides okay so this taper when you tighten the nut the nut presses on this taper and the collet presses on the taper in the shaft and that causes the collet to clamp onto the shaft of the um, of the motor okay so um yeah just so you you need to dimension the inner portion of uh where the collet actually fits into the shaft this portion over here you need to dimension that okay and just understand that collet you can see uh let me quickly hide a few things okay so the the where the collet this diameter over here is important and this taper is very important as well okay so um Yeah, that is in a nutshell what the drive shaft assembly now looks like and um, you need to dimension um, all the views that are shown 
on this dimensionless drawing. Also, yes, that's a good thing that I'm looking at it. So looking looking at the notes, what we're saying here, I've added this note. All diameters to be concentric to diameter 0, 0,2 relative to datum A. Right. So unless otherwise specified. So if you want something uh, different from this, if you deem it necessary, you can specify it. Um, that's your decision. Um, you can also decide to leave it as is. Okay, so that's really up to you to decide. Um, what you also need to dimension while I'm looking at it, don't forget to dimension the, the flats. This, this, this portion of detail 1. You don't need to worry about the front portion of detail 1, but you do need to dimension the flats, etc. Okay, and then obviously, as I said, the inside, the internal hole. Right, so uh, with that said, thank you very much and all the best. I hope you enjoy and learn from this practicum.